So you can see the screen, right? And start with the tutorial. So we can talk about introduction to work, then as a demo as well. Let's see how the drug architecture works. So the definition, it is an advanced NLP technique that combines two components, the three tribal and the generation elements to enhance uh, models, language AI language model capabilities. So RAG is designed to address some of the limitations LLMs have, such as static knowledge, lack of domain specific expertise, and the potential generating inaccurate hallucination responses. So in some questions, they do hallucinate in answering unrelated responses. So to fix that is why RAG is invented to see the use of RAG, like just see what kind of limitation an LLM could have. It could have memory constraint, constraints. LLM have a limited capacity to store and update knowledge. So their knowledge is primarily stored as a static parameter and cannot be expanded or revised, which RAG solved this problem because when it comes to storage and uh, having knowledge, vector data bases play a vital role uh, in rocks in rock system. Uh, the other would be lack of provenance. Provenance yeah. LLM struggle to provide insights into how they arrive at specific answers, and making it challenging to understand the reasoning behind the responses, uh, which also uh, the other would be the hallucination part where they respond in correct or unrelated uh, response from the question that a user or us expected and they have lack of domain specific knowledge i mean most of these models are trained three four or even further back years ago and their knowledge is ended on the day their training ended so these new technologies that come up right now, these new information that come up in any sector, they don't have. So you, we have to teach them, teach them to have those knowledge, especially on this specific knowledge. We want them for a particular area. Uh, it's likely they don't know that information. So we have to find a way to feed those new informations. So RAG is one of the ways that we can fix that error, that lack of knowledge. Uh, what are the components of RAG? The first one is the root tribal and the second the generator. What does the root tribal part of the RAG does? It's responsible for retrieving information from a large knowledge base. This knowledge base could be a vector data or any kind of storage could be identified as a knowledge, uh, a large knowledge database, which can be a collection of documents, web pages, image, any other six, uh, corp corpus, uh, it could be anything. So it's just storage for documenting, storing these informations. It uses techniques like dense vector representation to efficiently identify and run documents. All passage contain relevant information for a given task. So uh, when it retrieves this information, uh, it's those information are put in vector representation with the retriever uh, takes those vector representations based on the user's question, of course, and retrieve the relevant answer or uh, output the relevant answer regarding for the particular question. Once that part ended, once the retriever part ended, the next component that come up will be the generator. So the generator is responsible for taking the retrieved information that they get from the retrieval component and then generating a coherent and contextually relevant responses or statuses. So the response, the, the retriever that feeds the data from somewhere based on the user query uh, is then analyzed by the generator to output a more structured answer for the user. So the generator is responsible for generating the right current and contextual relevant response from those retrieved information. So it's often a generative 
language model such as GPT can play a part as a generator, uh, which is fine tuned to produce high quality figures based on their stripe context. So we can we use LLMs or others to play an ROG system as a generator to give us a relevant response for the particular query. Just what we talked about in just a graph, a chart. So there's a knowledge base where information is stored. The retriever is directly connected with our, our knowledge base, which retrieve information based on the user query. Once the information is retrieved, it passes to the generator. The generator will then output in natural language the relevant response that is perfect for the user query. This is the process of RAG system. So the key idea behind RAG is to leverage the strings of both retrieval and generation modules. Uh, retrieval modules excel at finding relevant information, similar uh, information from a large data set, while generation modules are good at producing natural language text that, uh, that will be is the understand be understood by the user by combining these two components we will have a right pipeline so rags aim to rag aims to produce highly accurate and contextual relevant responses or text generation for tasks like question answering document summarization chatbot application so we can use it for different use cases this is just another architecture to see in detail what the raw working process look like so uh, we can we have to uh, the changing the changing mechanism we will do it on our particular video for fix whatever information we are planning to do work on we will pass it to the changing process before we convert it to vector representation and storing it to some vector database We'll do chunking on it so that the vector representation capture all the data in the particular PDF. It's like tokenization, but in this case, we're not quite doing tokenization, tokenization but we will do with this method chunking, which is the same thing, just breaking down those PDFs or JSON files, whatever they are, into uh, different sections depending on our wish. You can change it in if you have a PDF with more than 300 or 400 pages. We can choose to chunk that particular PDF with page, so one page can be one chunk. It depends on what we need or how when the rug is answering the questions. We can alter our chunking ways, so uh, ways just to to make sure the rug is answering accurately. This is something we alter as we want until we create the required uh, part so anyway after there's chunking and we convert those chunked files or text or things or word to vector representation which we uh, store them in vector database then the retrieval part of our uh, pipeline is connected with the vector database and it accepts user input and fetch do similarity search on that vector database and just outputs several retrieval information that are related or similar to the equation. And those information will be passed to generator and the generator will output the right information as an output to the user. So this is basically what we will we'll do on Rock Pipeline. So the process on the retriever, just to break it down more, there will be a data source. This data source can be a database somewhere that you collect data from. It could be a document, it could be on a website, it could be an API endpoint which fetches some data. It could be any structured information repository. So any, what the thing is that we have to have some data source that we will play with, that we will put on the right pipeline to be processed. The second would be the chunking part. So we already talked about this one. And the other is the next step is converting those chunks to vector representation. If you have metadata, of course, if there is always metadata to indicate 
the data source much better to give additional information. If that exists, we will pass this metadata as well. Uh, then this is the driver process will end after it goes all this process. In the generation process, user query and point uh, will be there. RAG operates in response to user query. The user input server class that that is supposed to receive response. So the generator component will generate the response in related to the user question. There will be semantic search, which search for how close it is with the user question. This particular retrieved information that is fetched from the retriever component will pass through a semantic search and the most likely answer to the question will be the last the end response and the searching for relevant chunks. This is just to get the right answer for the question. And finally, combining the retrieval and generation when the relevant chunks are identified, RAC combines the retrieved information from these chunks with the user query interaction this foundation module, this combines, which is the last step, the user question, the retrieved information, and presented to the foundational module. Let's say, as an example, GPT to generate a more contextual, natural language relevant response for the user. So, so, so this is the whole process. What are the advantages of RAP? It can create context awareness response, so depending on how you trained your rug, how you pass it, which kind of data source data, your rug can be very context aware for all those particular questions. Uh, it could it, uh, uh, improve accuracy of the model um, because it will give likely the more accurate responses. Uh, efficiency and cost effectiveness, we don't have any Cost when you do rock, maybe depending on the model we used, we might need open API keys, which we can do a rock pipeline using even the free open API key with GPT. It will work on free as long as the token responses that come out are not too much, the key will work just fine. So it's very cost effective. There's no the cost that we uh, spend. When we fine tune is too much, you already experienced that one. The evidence and the data, uh, the lot of data we gather to fine tune. It's just there's a lot of time and money that is spent on other ways of uh, training a model. That drug is much cost effective compared to those uh, and time consume, time efficient as well. Versus that, the rug can be applied to different in a different kind of knowledge bases for different uh, specific areas of application it can be used so it's, it has versatility uh, the enhanced user experience users interact with rug power ai systems benefit from more accurate and relevant responses adaptability which rug allows AI models to adapt and learn from new data in real time without extensive retraining a model, rebuilding, fine tuning. Uh, you can easily let model, the model learn new information and reduce data leveling. So when we fine tune all the already experience this again, you have to do a lot of data annotation, data leveling efforts near to happen on those data sets that you train a model that with RAG. We don't need that data labeling. I mean, if you have metadata to express those chunking much better, it would be uh, it will increase the rug responses at the end. But we don't need the data labeling level on rug is not as much as it is on fine tuning and other. So it really reduce the data building, which needs manual uh, work much. It minimizes the, uh, that part of the work that the task that we apply on our data. So it's reduced data level. This is one really big advantage. So just to summarize, what RAG does, it bridges the gap between what language models know and the vast ocean of real-time knowledge available on the internet.
So it empowers LLMs to transcend their inherent limitations and deliver response grounded in the latest, most relevant information. The need for RAG becomes increasingly evident as we witness the occasional shortcomings of LLMs, which all of us have noticed they have now config formations on new updates that are happening right now uh, on specific areas. They don't have that information which we have to teach them. So by integrating WAG to AI systems, we are looking at the possibility enabling them to retrieve specified and present information like never before. So this is practically introduction to RAG. We will see the RAG implementation and how it solved with an example demo. If you have a question, you can write this. Okay. Let's go to the demo. Okay, is that question raised? Sheila, go ahead. Um, hi. Hi. Um, you can hear me? Oh, okay. Um, so I had a question. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was an amazing one. So I had a question. Um, from the materials that we have been provided with, there is that like, okay, you've talked about the retrieval and the generation, but there's a part that has been included, which is optional, which I'm not quite understanding. It's called the Jiranka. Could you please explain that to me? So in the documentation, I think the Jiranka is mentioned on the prompt or on the rug? Remind me. Um, it's part of the rug, not, not in the documentation, not in the um, whatever. It's okay. among the links, one of the links, it's part of the rug. Okay, so there is every rank on RAG's pipeline. That is, when you when the retriever retrieve information, when it does similar search on those big databases in fetch you data, it will not retrieve only one single possible answer for the question. It will output more than one information that it thinks is possible answers. So where we rank comes in is here. So you can re rank those output that get from the retrieval and we rank them. So which is the more likely answer that is much better related to the question, which you can identify with re-ranking. That is the purpose of re-ranking in RAC. Because the answer that come is a lot, a lot of possible answer, you will re-rank them to give the, which are the most likely answers to the prompt. It's just another procedure functionality you will put when you want to get the right answer for the question. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, Abdul Rahman? Uh, I just uh, was wondering about uh, the embedding part. Uh, since uh, last week was uh, about uh, fine tuning for Amharic, uh, mm. is the embedding part uh, like uh, tokenization? I mean, it's uh, it's work for any language as same as English, uh, as good as same for English. Yes, I mean the embedding part is not like the tokenization. Instead, the chunking part that I mentioned here is like the tokenization. Embedding is just, if you remember last time, I said embedding is the process of just converting those chunked or tokenized words or whatever they are to a vector representation. That's what embedding is doing. It will return whatever you chunked or tokenized. Those each tokened values will be converted to vector representation with the embedding module. That is the purpose of embedding. How it converts them, there is another algorithm you could read up on how embedding actually works. But in general, embedding is converting those tokenized breakdown values, words, sentence, or whatever they are to vector representation. So the tokenization part is similar with the checking here that I mentioned. 
which you decide how you can chunk your PDF or whatever that in this case to different sections. If it's, you can chunk in any way you want, chunking is similar with tokenization. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. Now let's go to the demo. Uh, you can also explore this question. Maybe let me just write this question on chat GPT. Let us ask it, what is la motto? And see what kind of answer it gives. Actually, I think they updated it. Four months ago, it will not answer like this. It will unless you need different answer. Uh, but let's see another question maybe. Let me ask it again. Mm -hmm. They updated it, but four months ago, if you ask this particular question, it will give you an answer saying it's an Indian instrument, music instrument, and it's a mother GPT saying, I don't know about this information. My information has ended in 2022. I don't have this particular information. So you can find these kind of questions at the model that I know. They have dated this one and it's answering actually quite well right now. So let's just assume it doesn't answer because it didn't answer before. Uh, and now we, what we were going to do is we're going to teach our LLM to understand information about Lama too. So let's start from building rug for feeding the, the LLM about Lama too. Maybe if you have GPT, different kind of GPT, you can test it. If they don't have data, the information, it will return those possible answers if you ask it about Lama too. Either it will say it's an Indian instrument or it will say, I don't know, I don't have the information. Okay, now let's just uh, begin with implementing teaching our model about Lama too, and make it to be able to answer about Lama too. So for this model, I mean demo, I have installed this particular libraries, Young Chain, Pinecode is a vector database. Uh, there are different types of database. If I can write them here, there is Chroma DB, which just do import phase and Pinecode. There could be others, but these are well known. You can use any one of them as a vector database. Here I'm using Pinecone and I'm using Pick Token. Just install these apps. Here uh, I am uh, using a GPT, a GPT 3.5 Turbo module. So uh, maybe we can ask what, what is Lama to if this particular module that know it. Let's just run it. The simple chat application where you can ask the model and it answers. Let me be here. Okay. It's just asking a question, it will answer. Now let's just go with hallucination rates if the model actually hallucinate if you ask it about Lama to the GPT 3.5 turbo. So let's run it this here. Not interrupts. Okay. The GPT 3.5 is not trained with the Lama 2 uh, question, I mean information. So it's saying I'm not sure what we're referring to with Lama 2. Could you provide blah blah blah? So it doesn't know if I have information about this particular question, Lama two. Mm -hmm. Now let's fix that with rock. So all we have to do if we ask it about this one again, can you tell me about LLM chain in lang chain?
again it will hallucinate it because it doesn't know the particular answer so this is where rux comes in without costing you much uh, you costing you your time and your money your money you can fix this errors so one thing is like i showed you in the lab before tutorials on the redash part you can actually write some information about the llm chain or lama 2 which is not enough but it's one thing that you can do you can just simply easily here i'm just giving the text information about llm chain the, the information about that and i'm passing it as a context to the model so here as a certain knowledge this is view source knowledge on llm chain then i'm passing it as a context and if i ask it because i give it will answer based on this information so if we run this one I actually I don't have to run it. Uh, so if I ask it now, the LM languages common type of it, it gives answer, which is the source knowledge base here is this one. It's not it's one way, but it's not an effective way. I mean you, you should have a large data set on some knowledge because an LLA, people can ask different type of coefficient on LLA and you Need to include all information about the learner, which this is not effective, but it's a way that works. Now, with that being said, let's just use RAG pipeline because with RAG we have a big storage we can access where we can store any data we want. So, here I am loading from Hugging Face, about, uh, it's a paper on Lama 2. So, I just loaded here. It's a PDF file. So let's see what kind of the it's a combination of different PDFs. So the first data set shows this kind of information. This is uh, just information about Lama in general. So I have fished all my data. Now the data is fished, the next step would be to store it in some knowledge base which in this case I'm using Pinecone. So we, in Pinecone, you just, uh, the only thing that you have to do, I think let's just open Pinecone.io is a website. You can just log in with your account. So after you logged into your account, just go to the account page. Now actually the projects page here, you will create one project, startup project. With free account, you only have one uh, option one only one chance to create one project you have to go to the pro with chroma db and pinecone db that i shared you right above they don't have any limitations they are free pinecone does require to have a pro account if you want to have more than but for this example you can use the one project it's enough so for this project there is an option says api keys where it will give you a default api key which you'll need to use to access Pinecone or your notebook. So here, that's what I did. I fixed the API key here and I initiate, initiate the Pinecone database. After I did that, I also created an index. It does this an index. It's just here I'm initializing my database to load my data. Okay. So after initializing my uh, database, my Pinecone database, the next step is embedding, right? Because these are vector databases, they store vector representation data. They don't store data as they are, raw data. So you can do on Postgres or other database with vector database, it needs a vector represented data. So we have to convert our the fish data above to vector embedding first. 
So here I'm using the text embedding other there there too from OpenAI. I'm using their model to do the telepresentation. After I have done that, which I initialize my model here. So now I have to pass the particular data set to be loaded. So this particular function is doing that. So I have chunked the data set. If you remember the data set, you can see it's, it's like an array, right? Data set zero, data doesn't, it's, it's uh, put it in an array form. So I am chunking it. Each row is one chunk. Here I'm choosing to do that. So I'm looping over each rows of my data, which, which indicates one of one row is one chunk. So here I am accessing each chunk, each row, and I am passing it to the embed model that I initialized above and passing those texts and an embedding for, uh, representation is a result for each file, for each text. Then after I get my embeds for each row, uh, here I'm defining a metadata, it's optional, uh, but you can define if you want. Then I am passing each data, data in the embeds to my pinecone database. Here I'm observing it, inserting it, fully stored. Uh, so the datas are along with their metadata stored to the pinecone. Now we're done with initializing. Uh, we, we're done with having a source. We have now a source uh, knowledge base on pinecone. The information of the data set about the LAMA tool. Now we go to the retrieval part. Once we define all those, we have to connect our retrieval with the pinecone database. Okay, so here I'm calling the pinecone. Pinecone library is found on the Lang chain by vector stores, which you can access like this. So I have initialize all of those with the vector store now directly fetch any data from the pinecone but how will i will fetch those data which we will define based on what kind of question we pass it it will the retrieval will only fetch those relevant responses to the particular question now this is a query again the query that was rejecting us before saying i don't know the answer now i passed this question Vector score or similarity search is another functionality you can find from Pinecone. So basically, what it do is like it's saying, it will, it will search a similarity search, which are possible answer from all those vector database chat information with this, what is so special about Lamadu. And when you pass this query by default, I mean, not by default, but behind the scenes, this approach query is also being change to a vector representation and that vector representation is the one that is going to go through the similar search with the stored vector information okay you have to know that always like if you pass a question to llm it actually not understanding your question with the english language with the natural language behind the scenes that actually that pair is changed to vector representation to a number llms could understand because this much to understand numbers, right? Like that way, this question is actually behind the scenes, converts it to a vector representation, then pass to the vector store, and those uh, this similarity search functionality will search to those values, vector ones that are closer to the question. And here for this particular question, three possible answer have put it. Actually, I have define it here saying what are the three possible answers that are more related to the question. If I increase it to 10, it will be to 10, but uh, how likely are all those things responsive related to Lama 2 is questionable because uh, any it, it might not be, but it will fetch based on the number similarity, what is possible here. I, def I limit it by saying only output three values, three possible responses. So now the retrieval ended. This is how the retrieval answered my question. So do a similar search with the knowledge database. 
this is not, I mean, a readable answer for human being, I mean, for users, right? It's really um, just growth. It's not uh, really, at, you're not quite getting the right answer that you want, neither it's readable, so we have to fix this, which this, the next step will be the generator part. So we'll pass the retried information to the generator side, and the generator will give the final relevant results with a natural language text that's more readable. So here I'm just defining a simple function. Function saying uh, this is the result, this one result. I'm just defining it by assigning to the result variable. Then here I'm writing an argument prompt for the, my model. I'm telling it to use the context below, which is the source knowledge. The source knowledge here, if you can see it here, I'm just doing a simple looping from the result answer. So we will go through each result. In this case, we have three possible answers. So this particular information will be like a source for the LLM. The, the re-ranking Sheila asked have to, can happen here. So the re-ranking, if you have a ranking algorithm that you have wrote, it will uh, mean, analyze the possible answers and will give them rank because the retrieve will just output those particular answers, not with an order, it just will output them. But with re-ranking, you can give them order and you can pass the most, the three or the four, or even all of them, but with LLM, depending on uh, what kind of key you have, the more information you pass to the LLM, it will show a maximum tokenization error because the uh, limit, the token value it can handle when you pass it as a context, uh, really depends on your uh, access to that module what kind of access do you have? So uh, it might throw that error. So just to limit, to not to have that problem, you can limit the source of knowledge. So here I'm just passing this three. If I pass a 20 or 10, it will cause that maximum problem. It depends on what key you have. That's great. Anyway, here I'm passing those parts, possible answer as a source knowledge for the LLA. And I'm telling it to answer based on this source knowledge to the query. Here, this is a simple prompt that I did. Okay, now let's act. You can see here, there's no LLM, right? It's just some functionality. So if I pass, just, just to see what this function does, and argument prompt and pass the query, this is kind of the answer it outputs, still not readable. There is no any uh, generator involvement here. It's just to see how it answers it. But we have to pass to the LLM to have the most relevant answer. This is not uh, good as well. So this is where we accessing the GPT we need to find above. I have passed a query, the argument prompt query, which answers this question, and that content is passed to the and including the prompt passed to the LLM. Finally, the prompt. I mean, the GPT as a generator will give me the output like this. Now, it's more readable if you can see it. So this is the final answer. The generator output Lama 2 is a collection of pre-trained fine grid right? It, it continues with the answer. So this is a more relevant response that I get at the end of my pipeline. The generator output this one, and I'm passing it different types of questions. Again, the LLM is answering it. The right way we have the source knowledge from the retriever information and this is how it looks like so this is what a right pipeline is doing in simple form so we fix what is the question about lama 2 using this particular pipeline and let's evaluate is how accurate is the answer we can use ragas evaluation it's a library which you can store wise keep install ragas I have already installed it. I'm just gonna test one of the questions answer. So what, what's special about Lama 2? For that, let's just here. Uh, ground truth is or expected output. So if the 
what is special about for the question what's uh, special about lama two let's say the right answer i mean the right answer is this one this is a ground truth so we are expecting the model to answer us as much as possible uh, an answer that is like this one we might write it in different words but at the end we want to have this kind of information about lama two. this is the ground we expect to put it this one and here i'm putting in json format because that's how ragas go through the evaluation process so i have put the query over the question the result i got from the generator model and a component and the source documents which are in this case the retrieved informations and the ground truth this is what you expect this ground truth you have to manually specify this question needs to have this particular answer and in the model is my rug is actually answering is a rug answer is actually similar with the ground truth is how ragas evaluate your uh, pipeline so i have specified the information then i pass it to the ragas evaluator chain passing it this information this response information this is i'm just defining the ragas evaluation here here i'm telling it to there's a lot of metrics Ragas evaluate on the faithfulness of the answer, the answer relevance, the context relevance, the context record. I'm just here uh, checking these four metrics, but there are more metrics you can check uh, on. You can add those metrics uh, and it will evaluate them. For this demo, I'm just uh, testing with these four metrics. Then I pass the responses that I get, which is the JSON that I defined above. And this is the faithfulness information that I get. I mean, this is the ragas evaluation that I get for what special lama two. Uh, so relevance score zero point eight, context relevance zero point six four, context record one point zero. It's not perfect, but it's good. So this kind of uh, output the evaluation that I get for my pipeline using ragas. Uh, I'm just here plotting. Uh, my ragas evaluation answers that's great so this is how a particular rag pipeline will look like to fix an issue uh, about a particular knowledge if you have questions you are welcome to ask okay is it clear the demo Okay, Michael. Okay, so for chunking method, is there any criteria how to do the chunk the chunking method? Uh, sorry, what what's the question, Mike? For the chunking, like uh, the chunking the data, is there any like the in the tokenization? There was like word tokenization at uh uh, later tokenization something like that so in the same manner is there something specific or criteria to choose from the yes methods? i mean the same kind of tokenization criteria you can use on chunking but i mean with chunking there are no particular models it's just how you prefer to chunk it you will just uh, come i don't know if they are good them but as far as i know you can come up with your own function algorithm so here I decided to chunk the particular uh, data set that I have. It's an array data set and each array value, index one, index two, index three to be their own chunk. That's how I ch do the chunking here. So if you, do want, you don't want that, if you want to do the chunking word by word, you can come up with an algorithm to do the chunking with that way. Uh, but I'm sure there could be also chunking algorithms out there they, they definitely will be there uh, you can do the chunking so the chunking can be anything really it could be a word chunking be a sentence chunking be a chain um a paragraph chunking it could be a sentence chunk. it could be a, a page chunking so and which you will also add the, uh, you can alter them at the end so depending on what kind of answer rock pipeline accuracy is you are likely to change your chunking mechanism as well because if the chunking is not the right way the right the right pipeline will not be effective 
So you will go back again to the chunking and then change it how you chunked it. Is that clear, Michael? Yes, thank you. Any other question, confusions, please forward them here. Sheila, go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, about the rug, I wanted to ask, so for our project, for the project that we're doing, in essence, because we are trying to generate like prompts, like prompt generation, also prompt um, um, assessment and ranking of the prompts, um, does it, okay, from what I'm understanding is because you're using RAG here for an existing LLM. So for our project, uh, what, are, what we're supposed to do is, are we supposed to like generate like a mini, it's like a mini LLM that has like, uh, that develops, generates prompts for us instead of generating text. Is that what we're supposed to do for this project? And then I'll incorporate RAG into that mini LLM. LLM. Yes, I mean, you have to, the RAG, the form generates parts, so the part the system that generates, that is connected to this model, of course, uh, to process those generations for part, and somehow, and you can connect the RAG on here. I'm just passing what is so special about uh, LAMA, right, one singular question. That particular condition can be represented by different prompts that make the appearance of my right problem much better. So once you have defined your prompt generation part, you can pass the after the evaluation and the ranking of your prompt, the most well, uh, right way of asking that particular question will be passed to your work system. And you can show that uh, through your project using this prompt, the rug is actually performing really well compared to what the first user question, how the user ask the first question. Is that clear, Sheila? Wait. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any, if there's no other question that you have? Yes, Hilary shared. I, I forgot that. Uh, because the character is bigger, yeah, that's one way as well. Yeah, I'll share the notebook on the drive. Dereji question. Dereji, is your answer, is your question answered when I took? Hilary. Yeah, so for Agas, <clears throat> are we evaluating the um, the, uh, the the response? Uh, I, I think it's the response. Is it? Is that the case? Just to clarify. You're asking about the Ragas evaluation, Hilary? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking uh, yeah. what, what are you using Ragas to evaluate for and also... Ragas, what the Ragas is evaluating is, uh, you, they would be on you before you implement the Ragas, you will have some kind of information that you pass for the Ragas, that is the user question. The user the user question, your Rag output for that particular question, and what is the expected output for that question, the right answer. So you will pass this three in the source knowledge and you will process this for information and the RAGAS evaluation will evaluate uh, this particular information. So how like, how uh, accurate is the answer with the expected result, the work pipeline and it will output this matrix with a value. The effectiveness, there are almost 10, I think, in the RAGAS matrix. It will give them a value depending on the test case that you give it. Thank you. Can you share the collab? Yeah, I'll share it on the drive. I think, yeah, for the open API case, okay, um, we're talking with the team, so we will notify you on the Slack. Yeah. 
Okay, can I give last direction that no more question, we can end the tutorial.